In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've reached um, session four for who do you say that I am? And who do we say that we are as disciples of Jesus? So who does Jesus say that he is? Or who do we say that Jesus is? And, and then how does that affect our life of faith? And this is a good um, session today. Jesus is the healer. And there's all sorts of healings in um, the scriptures um, all throughout the Gospels. And we're really going to look at three uh, passages in John's Gospel because these really are, um, this, is, this is what we've been doing, is go through John's Gospel. So we're going to continue through John's Gospel and, and use, use these um, healing events as, as sort of markers of, of what Jesus is and, and how we respond, because this is the important reality of, of what it means when we say Jesus is the healer. When we say, who do we say that I am? Jesus, you're the, you're the one who brings forth healing, um, physical healing, emotional healing, mental healing. Uh, you're the one who restores us um, in in to to God the Father in in all ways. You're the one who heals our souls. Come unto me, all you that travail and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is from Matthew's Gospel, right? Of 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 comfort and assurance. Um, but we're going to begin in John four. This is after Jesus comes back from Samaria, heading into Galilee, and he comes by um, the the um, an official from Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus, this is in 447, when he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went to him, ask him to come down and heal his son, for he's at the point of death. So Jesus says, unless you see the signs and wonders, you won't believe. And the official said, sir, come down before my child dies. And he said, go, and your son will live. And the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went on his way. And as he was going down, his servants met him and told him that his son was recovering. So he asked the hour. He began to get better. He said, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. And the father knew that was the hour that Jesus said to him, your son will live. And he believed in all his household. And this was now the second sign that Jesus did when he had come from Judea to Galilee. And now this passage um, is combined with the next one that we're going to read um, is is they sort of stand in contrast to one another and, and indeed and more so even even um, in the passage um, the third account that that we all read um, the man believed right this is this is Jesus didn't need to come down with him Jesus already was was sort of uh, criticizing him to begin with to say you're you're focused on the signs. Um, you're focused on seeing the miracles. You're you're focused on experiencing this, but you're not you're not grasping the true reality of what God has to offer. That a new sort of new creation, new world, new um, life is is bursting forth. And so Jesus isn't just um, the healer of of this man's son, though he he does he does physically heal. And he gives us power to physically pray for people to be healed. Um, but it's a way that points to what God is doing and that God is is doing new things in the world, that there's um, a new kingdom, a new grace, a new power, a new creation that's at work. And so Jesus, Jesus says this and the man says, I believe. He believes in what Jesus is pointing to, this new kingdom that God is creating, um, that we're being invited into and to participate in. And and um, all through John's gospel, there's this tension between um, people focusing on, on, um, on clues, maybe, and signs rather than on, on the, the goal. Uh, N.T. Wright describes it as you can get distracted 
um, by by the clues and and figuring out the clues for a treasure hunt and forget that that the goal is to find the treasure um, at the end of the treasure hunt, not all the clues to to sort of focus on and, and to see how they are. Um, if the clues become the main part, you're, you'll miss the fact that the treasure is at the end. And this is what happens sort of in John's gospel and happens especially with, with these healings and the challenges and the questions and, and some of the other things. And so um, the man believed that and, and his son was healed. And so Jesus, the, the, next, the next passage happens right afterwards. Where, where Jesus goes to the man who's at the, um, the pool of Bethsaida. And um, this is in John chapter 5. And he, and he says, um, and he's been there 38 years paralyzed. And Jesus says to him, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be healed? And um, his answer was, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. When I go down, somebody else gets there before me. And there's a little footnote um, that, or another another verse. A lot of times uh, the verses in our Bible, um, some verses, some Bible translations have it, some don't. Um, but generally it's a little, at least a little footnote someplace where, where it says, an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons of the certain seasons of the pool and stirred the water and whoever stepped in first was healed of whatever disease they had. So this is the idea. And so this is why that man says it. He's basically saying, I've been here 38 years and I can't get in there first. Um, somebody always beats me to the punch. Um, but that wasn't the question that Jesus asked, right? Jesus asked, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be healed? Um, and, and it's interesting because in this case, um, Jesus doesn't actually wait for an answer. Um, he gets an answer. He gets sort of that wishy-washy, I, I can't get there. But he didn't say yes or no. And Jesus didn't actually press him, did he? He, he, he says in verse 8, go, take up your bed and walk. And at once the man was healed, he took up his bed and walked. And now this is the third sign that Jesus does. It doesn't specifically say this is the third sign, but this is the third sign that Jesus is is um, the one from whom uh, God is at work in and bringing forth this new kingdom. The word is made flesh and dwelt among us and, and brings forth, um, again, we'll keep coming back to this, right to become children of God, um, which which really ultimately is who do we say that we are? Again and again and again, the answer should be we're children of God. We're children of the living God, um, who have who have rights as heirs, um, to to live fully into the into the knowledge and glory that the kingdom of God belongs to us. Um, and so, how do we respond in that? Um, we respond reflecting who Jesus is to bring forth healing in the, in the lives of the people in the world, the same way Jesus has brought healing to this, the official son and now to this crippled man. Um, but it's interesting because the crippled man is breaking the Sabbath, right? And so this is, this is again, we, we sort of talked about, not in the videos, but we talked about in the class the other day, um, how Sabbath has shifted and changed a little bit. And indeed, um, it has such because there's a new creation. I mean, in some ways, right, Jesus didn't have to heal this man on the Sabbath day. The man gets into trouble and tattles on Jesus um, a couple chapters down, down, the, down the road here um, on the, because, because he's getting yelled at for carrying his mat on the Sabbath day, um, which was considered work. Um, and Jesus didn't have to heal him on the Sabbath day. But, but in reality, John is is writing and, and, and demonstrating who, what Jesus is doing, that Jesus is like, it's, my father's at work, right? This, the reason we have the Sabbath is on the seventh day, God rested, right? And so on the seventh day after creation, God rested. Um, 
And so we have week after week after week after week, this, this day of rest in the Sabbath. And, and maybe the time will come for rest again, Jesus is saying, but, but the time is not now, right? The new creation is, is happening now. There is no Sabbath. The, the new creation is happening today. I can't wait. My father's at work. I'm at work. So I'm healing today. Today is the day where, where people are going to be made well. Um, and so it's, a, it, you know, so already right now we have this tension where, where people want to kill Jesus for, for uh, bringing forth this new creation, these new rules and this uh, new way and this new healing. And so Jesus as, as um, the healer, uh, a real important question for us t- to answer in this passage isn't just how can we bring forth healing? Oh, that's a good question. How do we bring forth healing? But another, another important question is the question that Jesus may ask each and every one of us day in and day out. Do you want to be made well? Do you want to be healed? Are you content um, to, to dwell in your sickness? Or do you want to get up, take up your mat and go home? I mean, and let's face it, that's a real question, right? That's, a, that's an important question because, because Jesus is offering to heal us. But the reality is many of us Many of us become complacent. Our sickness becomes part of us, right? Um, do you want this pandemic to end? It's a good question, right? You say yes right away. But, and, and for most people, it's probably true. But for some people, there's probably a nice new rhythm of life. Um, you know, maybe for some, they don't have to drive into work anymore. Uh, for some, there's there's a whole new level of stress that's been cut out of their lives. For others, there's been maybe an acceleration of stress that's that's crept into their lives. And so um, the answer is, you know, be honest, right? Do you want to be made well? Being made well means means change, right? It means growth. Um, this man's been been ill for 38 years. He's been paralyzed for 38 years. He hasn't worked for 38 years. He makes money. You know, when when the blind man leaves his cloak behind to follow Jesus, blind Bartimaeus is one of the big things, right? He, He leaves his cloak to follow Jesus. In those passages, he leaves his cloak because that's where he collected his alms, his money. Now he can see. Nobody's giving money anymore to a once blind beggar, but now a person who can see. Now it's time to change. It's time to work. It's time to be a productive member of society, whatever that means, right? It, there's, there's a shift. There's a change, a dramatic life change that takes place. Um, if you were paralyzed and now you're not. For 38 years, you've been doing the same thing. What are you going to do now? And, and it's interesting, we don't know what he does. Um, we know what he doesn't do. And what he doesn't do is, is follow the example of the man born blind in John chapter 9, which is the other passage in sort of the one, two, three, four, five, the sixth, um, maybe the sixth or the seventh sign, right? Um, I can't remember which. The sixth sign, because the seventh sign is raising Lazarus. There's seven signs, not to give anything away. Um, seven signs um, in the book of John. But, but uh, so the sixth sign is, is healing the man more than blind. And, and you remember in that instance, um, the major aspect of that is a couple things. Again, this is a Sabbath day. Again, Jesus' disciples sort of kick off the, kick off the question in, in John chapter 9 of who sinned, this man or his parents. Somebody had to sin, right? Otherwise, why would this guy be born blind? It's got to be somebody's fault. Jesus, this isn't anybody's fault. It's the fault of sin, right? It's the fault of this. Because but it really is born blind so that the Son of Man might be glorified. That, that the healer of, of the world, the word made flesh, might be glorified. Um, and that's what's happening here. He's, he's healed. Jesus, Jesus takes him, right? Um, 
mud and, and puts it on his eyes with his spittle and, and, and sends him off to wash and he's healed. Um, and, and the Pharisees call him in, um, want to know how he's, how he's healed. And, um, they call in his parents and then they call him back. And, and the man basically says, you know, when he, when Jesus is accused of, of being basically, um, not, not from God says, this is a marvel. You don't know who this guy is. We know God doesn't listen to sinners. And they said, you're steeped in sin. You know, um, who are you to, who are you? to lecture us. Um, and, and there's a great, uh, a great sort of back and forth in, in that, that passage where, where the man stands up to the Pharisees about who Jesus is and the type of person who Jesus is. Never before have, have we heard about a man being born blind, being healed, and yet he healed me. Um, and it's a marvel. And, and when he's challenged again, what, do you want to follow him too? Do you two want to be his disciples? Or we're disciples of Moses. We don't know who this guy is. Um, and they threw him out of the synagogue and, and Jesus goes and finds him. Um, and the same way he sort of found the crippled man, the crippled man, he said, go, uh, you know, be, be careful, like go on your way and, and don't sin anymore. Right. Um, and he immediately went off and tattled, uh, the man born blind, um, Jesus says, do you know what? Do you want to follow the Son of Man? He goes, Who is he? Show me where he is. Jesus says, I who am speaking to you am he. And he said, Yes. And he left everything and followed Jesus. And this is the this is the big the big comparison. You've got the 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 person who believed and went back and his son was was healed. You have the person who is um healed. But didn't, but didn't respond, and, and didn't maybe even really want to be healed necessarily. Um, and then you had the man born blind who did respond again. Um, so you, you know, there's. It's interesting because in in developing this this class to start with, you know, I, I sort of thought, um, who do you say that I am was the main the main aspect, the main point. Who do we say that Jesus is, right? And how does this, and, and, you know, so we can list all the different things that Jesus is. Jesus is the word made flesh and Jesus is the Messiah and Jesus is the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And Jesus is the healer. But also, but also maybe even more importantly, um, as I began to reflect is, is who do, who do we say that we are? Or at the very least, what does it mean that Jesus is these things. How do we respond to who do we say that Jesus is? Um, because we have here three examples, um, which are which are different, right? We have the one who believed and he went home um, to his own household, and then he and all his household believed. So they 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 became believers in the midst of their community. Um, those who who continued to to um, lift up the word made flesh, um, to be drawn to that, that new creation, that new community. We have, um, the man who's paralyzed. We don't know what happened to him. We know, we know he immediately did not respond positively to the healing, um, that he'd received because he went and, and, uh, tattled to the Pharisees, whether or not he repented later of that action. I don't have any idea. Right. Um, and then we have the man born blind who became a follower. Um, and, and left everything to follow Jesus and, and to travel with him and to become a disciple. And, and this, is, this is an important aspect of what, of what I think John is trying to say and an important aspect of, of what life in Christ is. is it, it's not just this sort of mental knowledge of who do we say that Jesus is. It's what does it mean when Jesus is this? What does it mean that Jesus is the healer? What does it mean that God is bringing forth a new creation, a new promise, a new hope into the world? What does it mean when we are allowed to become children of God? What does it mean when Jesus comes to us and says, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? How do we respond? Truly, deeply. How do we react? 
What's our answer to Jesus when he says, do you want to be made well? Are we willing to enter fully into the life that God has for us? Are we willing to enter fully into following, into believing, into trusting, into making that shift in our lives? Because Jesus is the healer. He's come to you and he's come to me asking the question, do you want to be made well? The answer is ours. It's yours. It's mine. Amen.